Well, this is the situation currently. We have 17 days <laughs> to get this thing ready to go. OMG. I don't know if we're going to make it or not. It's going to be close. This is ridiculous. I wanted to be making canvas by now. Yeah. We'll get it. We'll get it. I promise. Got our uh, front board in. And the angle iron is bolted through the U-bolts down through the frame. So that is all finished. And we are ready now to start. Well, there's no we. <laughs> Aaron is going to start the front cabinet. So we're making progress. Slow but steady. I want to get a shot of that before we change the uh, the layout of it because it's a, it's about to change. Won't be able to see that wall again for a while. I hope never again. <laughs> hope we're not rebuilding it again. Oh, well, the only one alive here might be Dalton. That ever yeah. <laughs> So this is what we're starting now. Woohoo! Well, where? I said where again? Like, you know. Oh well, I'll be helping put it together. Here's a little before and after on the lift arms. Same arm, one's from the front, one's from the back. Brass cleaned up really nice. Parts are stamped. I don't know if it's the parts that are stamped because that one's 211 this one's 227 the trailer front board is stamped 227 and then there's five five but on that same one is a six I don't know what those markings mean if it's a part number I don't know and it looks like this other one has 211 and 227 on it. Do those have five, five, and six, and six? Nope, that one's got a one. <laughs> so I guess we'll see what those end up looking like, but I think you're going to turn out pretty nice. Brass is in really good shape. And I just used a surface. I really can't. I'm putting a shadow on it, but it looks really nice compared to that. One of those, uh, I'll show you what I'm using on it. It is a surface conditioning tool. This one is the Bauer brand, but it's got these little rolling discs on the front of the machine. It works really well. It's kind of a heavy machine. I tend to use it uh, just holding it with one hand, <laughs> so it's a little heavy, but this is how I hold it. It's worked out really well for these. Just starting to clean up the, the little slider where the lift arm is in. <laughs> Got some old grease. Kind of venom. <laughs> it's not one to come off very well, but I thought we could get these cleaned up. Yeah. Let's go look at this at big time. We'll get there. So here's the before and after on the front little sliders where the wheels go. So these would go together. Let's see if I can get them to stand up. Nope. <laughs> these go together uh, like a two. And there's a gap there and the wheel that lift, does the lift arm slides inside there. And they're just kind of starting, like, starting to show their age. They were coated with uh, the same type coating that's on steel today. And you can see it's pretty good on this piece here. This was the interior piece. This one was the one that was kind of facing the outside of the trailer that was exposed. And then here is with just one pass of the uh, surface conditioner. And uh, I'm going to call that good because I'm going to paint them anyway. The inside of them looks pretty good. I'll wipe it down with some degreaser. 
and then some acetone, but that looks much better than they did before. So I've just been spending some time sanding down the surface of the original uh, cabinet drawers. And uh, we decided to go ahead and change the stain color. I don't have the little swatch, but our fabric swatch looks like puke <laughs> next to that. So we decided to go ahead and change it. I went with uh, this stain. So we went with this color here, which is uh, briar smoke. But as I was kind of going through and sanding down these drawers, this one, I think I sanded it off, but it was labeled driver. Yeah, I sanded it off. Driver 1030, or sorry, left 1030. This one is labeled right 1030. And I was like, 1030? Where have I seen that number before? Right here on the tongue of the trailer, it says HEC 1030. So these were <laughs> quite the uh, quite the build on these things. So yeah, just wanted to get a picture of that before it went away. Wonder if the other ones uh, are labeled that way. But yeah, 1030 trailer number. You know, we had to take this camper so far down, all the way down to pretty much just wheels and frame, and even some of the frame had to be cut out. And we initially planned to kind of keep all of the original stuff that we can, but uh, that has since <laughs> uh, gone by the wayside and we're kind of making it our own. I mentioned the original cabinetry really just kind of clashes. Not showing up real well in there, but just kind of clashes. This is very orange. Not showing up real well on camera, but it's, it's um, what I would consider like a 1960s maple cabinet color and this is more of a I don't know like a it's called taupe but it's more has more gray in it and so this is the color we've decided to go with and I think that looks so much better so I've decided to go ahead and stain everything that color I've sanded down the original we did keep the original door drawer fronts and so this one's the kitchen sink or underneath the, the little sink. And I really don't like that there are runs in the, uh, whoever re attempted to restore it before us, just uh, kind of did a, a disservice to it. So I'm gonna sand this off and we're gonna stain all of these to match that. Well, it is quite a hot mess in here. <laughs> I just thought I'd show everyone the utter chaos we've been working in the last few days. Uh, but we did make some progress. Although I have the arms up here backwards, we kind of know how they go back on now. This paddle should be the other way. So I gotta switch this guy with this guy. Apparently I labeled those wrong. But we got this side done cabinetry done. It looks really nice. I kind of like this stain. It's not showing up real well on camera, but it's got a real nice hue to it. And the grain of the wood really comes through. So I like, I like what we went with. I like that choice. Looks good. And we went with the uh, finished washer and the screws rather than the nails. Uh, we typically do that on anything we can. We try to go with a screw that we can take back out if we need to. This was all nailed together from the factory, and it was just a bear to get out of there. So if you ever have to take that apart, it just makes it so much harder. So anytime we redo a camper, we've done a few, we try to make it where it's easy to get back into if you need to. I wish I would have done these screws lined up the same. <laughs> But, eh, it is what it is. We needed one a little bit lower because it wanted to kick out right there. You know, should have probably moved that one down. Oh well, I didn't. And then this one is in the center of 
the door, but not in the center of the latch, so the latch is not in the center of the door. I had to go with the latches with where they were, because we used the original doors. So there is very little original that we kept, but anything we could, we did. And then up in the center of the roof, we're going to do a uh, vintage ceiling tile look. You know, the old metal ceiling tiles. So we bought these, and they're like a matte. They're not glossy, so I think those are going to be really nice in there. And we're just doing them down, down the middle. So we decided since we, were, uh, we couldn't really keep any of the old wood and any of the old stuff, we just make it make it ours. Just make it how we want to make it. Give it a little bit of a modern punch, and still keep the original design and pattern, but give it a little bit of a modern flair. So that's what we did. I think it's going to work out real well. The flooring is kind of we got a a true Congolium that has kind of that speckled look like the old flooring. So I think it's going to be good. But I'm going to clean this up, and I wanted to get a shot of this mess. My poor old double cab. Poor buddy. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Hot mess. We are going to keep the original drawers and then we just put uh, new bottoms in them. The side wood was still fine. So just put new bottoms in them, sanded down the front. Still got to stain those. So all the, all the drawers and doors to the cabinets are original. Aaron did get the uh, kitchen cabinet done. It's right here. It is all done. Can't really see it from over there. Yeah, and he built that. He built it really quick. Less than a day, I think, is what he spent coming up with that. And all the guts, he managed to save most of the original stuff that was in there. So that's kind of cool. So all the drawer towers and all of that are from the original. And we decided to turn the refrigerator sideways. So I'm going to take that door off and repaint it. And I've got a strip on it. I've got to redo. So I'm going to take this off. And it is welded right here and right here. So I'm going to have to just buzz that real quick with a cutoff wheel. I'm going to have to redo this panel because it's going in sideways. That's going to be super obvious. So i got to fix it. And then I'll put a new drain hole. I took the center divider out and put a new drain hole in it so it goes down instead of out. And then we'll just put a cork on that one so if we ever decide to flip it back the other way, we can. I'd love to find an original fridge, but yeah, it's like finding a needle in a haystack. So we'll just make this one work. Well, this is where we are currently. Everything of, the, of importance is kind of stained. And then all of the arms are in, and everything seems to move really easily. This moves way better than it has ever moved. I went ahead and put just a threaded bolt all the way through, put a little brass acorn nut on those. It looks a little nicer than just a, a bolt and nut setup. The trunnion was bent on the back. I had to use this one to get that back one kind of as straight as possible. So don't want to cast any new aluminum one of those. The brake now works. So as you crank the trailer up, you can see that brake is letting go. But if I go backwards to crank the trailer down, the brake locks. However, the arm to release that is broken. It would come out right here. And I'm going to try and fix it with a little bit bigger piece of steel. That's a dinky little thing. It's no wonder that broke. It was destined for failure to start. There were press fit brass bushings. I have gone with a spring against a washer just to keep this in place to keep it from moving back and forth. I can't, it can't touch on either side because it has to spin, has to spool freely. Got this all back together so when you crank like we're gonna whoop, crank like we're gonna raise it up it's working pretty smooth i did lose the um keeper on my chain so i had to go with a oh, oh safety wire on it probably could buy a link for that just by the chain number 
I am getting ready to put the cables on and I have swedged a couple of ends on these and we're gonna try that rather than what was on there before. Just drill a hole in a board and stick your cable in and then drop some hot solder in on it and let it sit there. Of course, remembering to flex the end of your cable and you kind of spread out the ends of it a little bit so the, the fibers of your cable are kind of like that. And then when you have that in there, it's a lot stronger. And then I put it in the vise and pull on it and make sure it's good to go. And uh, this one should be good. I think that'll just be a little neater than having the, they had the little tie backs, you know, the cable tie backs on there. Try this, might be a little tidier. So it's coming along. <laughs> Got the back one on too, so. Let's see if we can get some cables on here. Just thought I'd show real quick the lift mechanism, how clean it is now, how tidy all the cabling is. And whoever had these little keepers on there before had them on wrong, so it would cut up the actual keeper that keeps that cable from jumping off the pulley. I'm missing a pulley, so we, we weren't missing one, but we are now. I took it in to uh, see if we could switch them out for these garage door pulleys, and I have misplaced it. So we have a garage door pulley on one of them because I can't find it, but the other ones are all the original ones. They're okay. They're gonna need something done at some point. So, may have to put a bigger pulley on it and then uh, put a bigger, make a bigger keeper. It's just hammered aluminum. It's just hammered in a triangle and on the, each corner of the triangle, or cut out in a triangle, and each corner of the triangle is a little tab folded over. But I mean, pulley size, we could change. I mean, the diameter of the pulley doesn't really matter. And this gives us a, these have a bearing in them. So that's kind of nice. These do too, but it's like a built in bearing. And then I just made the ends of the cable, tried to tidy it up a little bit before they had the, the tie-offs up here and had two of them on and all the extra uh, cable was just bundled and tied off with a zip tie. It looked bad and it was just a disaster waiting to happen. So I have all of the cable fed over now. Whoops, worked a piece of tape in there. I have to get that back out. And then they just come through a bolt and tie off underneath the bolt. I have to get that out of there though. Bummer. Factory crank handle with a little bit of never seize on the end of it. The shaft was pretty gnarly, so I tried to keep it from seizing up. Looks okay, not too bad. This is way cooler though. <laughs> this is a, a Marcyized version crank handle for the vintage trailer. I dig it. Works great too. Which one would you choose? Well, every time I see the sun, a rooster crows for days. And every time I see that gal, she always looks away. Hell, she always looks away. Hold on, baby, just hold on. I'll be coming home. 